And joining me now is House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries, Democrat from New York. Leader Jeffries, welcome back to Meet the Press. Good morning. I want to start by asking you about this historic verdict. President Biden opened his remarks on Friday saying it is irresponsible for anyone to say the verdict was rigged just because they do not like it. This crime was more than eight years old. There are questions about the validity of the legal theory, uh, untested legal theory that was used to prosecute it. Would this case have been brought against anyone other than former President Trump? Yes, of course. This verdict in the case of People v. Trump was a validation of the American judicial system. Donald Trump was entitled to the presumption of innocence. He received it. Donald Trump was entitled to a trial by a jury of his peers. He received it. Donald Trump was entitled to a vigorous defense. He received it. Twelve jurors, twelve American citizens, after five weeks of a trial, evaluated the facts, the evidence, and the law, and came to a unanimous decision as it relates to convicting Donald Trump on 34 felony counts. That is an affirmation of the American Co judicial system. This is America. We are not a system that is occupied by a monarch or a king or a dictator. We are a democracy, and in a democracy, no one is above the law. Congressman Jeffries, Donald Trump's attorney, as you've certainly heard, said that they will appeal the verdict. If it is overturned on appeal, will you accept that result? Yes. Simple as that. Let me ask you about Thursday's verdict then. In the time since, the Trump campaign claims that it has raised tens of millions of dollars. How concerned should Democrats be that this conviction will, will help Donald Trump get reelected? Well, this election will present a clear contrast between President Biden and Democrats in the House and the Senate, uh, who will always continue to put people over politics. Extreme MAGA Republicans are going to continue to lie for Donald Trump. President Biden and Democrats are going to continue to solve problems for hardworking American taxpayers. Extreme MAGA Republicans will continue to lie for Donald Trump. Sir, those President Biden and Democrats are going to work on delivering real results, as has been the case for the last three and a half months. And we're going to see that extreme MAGA Republicans will continue to lie for Donald Trump and present no real vision for dealing with the issues of importance to the American people. That's a contrast. And I'd rather be on President Biden's side of that contrast than on the extreme MAGA Republican side. So what I want to drill down on that with you and excuse my interruption with the delay and the satellite. Those close to the Biden campaign tell me that Mr. Trump's uh, conviction is not going to be a central message of this campaign. Is that the right approach? I think the right approach is to make clear that real progress has been made on behalf of the American people because of the leadership of President Biden. We were able to rescue the economy from a once-in-a-century pandemic. Should this be a arms, central issue, though? Pockets, kids back in school. I think that the issues of importance to the American people, such as the progress that has been made and the need to continue to build upon that progress and finish the job by working on continuing to build a healthy economy from the middle out and the bottom up, lowering housing, costs, addressing the challenges at the border, and ending price gouging will be central to the message that President Biden and House Democrats articulate moving yeah. forward. Can, can the extreme mega Republicans point to a single issue Let where they've actually made progress for the American people? A single issue? They cannot. Let me and so as a result, what we see are conspiracy theories uh, being spewed at the direction of Donald Trump. Sir, let me ask you about another question that we'll be watching and we'll make headlines this week. Hunter Biden, the president's son, goes on trial for gun charges beginning tomorrow. President Biden said last year, quote, my son has done nothing wrong. The Wall Street Journal, as you see here, the editorial board said at the time, quote, that's a highly inappropriate message from a president. He's essentially telling prosecutors that they are wrong to bring an indictment because Hunter is innocent of any criminal behavior. Why was it appropriate for President Biden to publicly comment on his son's case? President Biden commented as a loving father, as I would hope any loving father would do. Hunter Biden, of course, is entitled, as was Donald Trump, to the presumption of innocence and to a trial by a jury of his peers. 
and this Justice Department is going to proceed in that fashion, present the facts and the law, and then we'll all have to wait for a determination that is made by a jury as to Hunter Biden's guilt or innocence. Let me ask you about what's been taking place overseas right now in news that was made just this morning. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel just accepted the invitation from you and your congressional leadership colleagues to address a joint session of Congress. We don't have a date for that yet, but the Senate's top Democrat, Chuck Schumer, recently uh, called Netanyahu, quote, a major obstacle to peace. So do you agree with Schumer's assessment that Netanyahu is a major obstacle to peace? Well, it's my hope uh, that the Prime Minister, upon his arrival in the United States Congress, will address the Biden peace plan that has been put forth that I think comprehensively provides a way forward to bring the hostages home, to end the conflict in Gaza, to allow for a just and lasting peace to be put into place, which is what every reasonable person Is he a major obstacle to peace, though, sir, to, to my question? It's my hope that Prime Minister Netanyahu, consistent with what has been done by the Israeli War Cabinet, which is to unanimously adopt the Biden peace plan, uh, will conduct himself in a manner consistent with that Israeli War Cabinet. It's on Hamas, as far as I can tell, as President Biden indicated, to accept the peace plan so we can end this conflict and move towards so just in last. So you don't have any criticism of Netanyahu's conducting of this war to this point? I think that there will be ample room to be able to assess what okay. was done right, what may have been done wrong. I certainly criticized uh, the Israeli airstrike from earlier this week. It yeah, was a tragedy. It should not have killed. happened. And we mourn for the loss of people. Uh, Leader Jeffries, I want to ask you about the president's challenges, specifically with black voters. It has been a focus of the campaign for the last several weeks. As you know well, President Biden promised legislation on police reform, on voting rights. He failed to deliver on both. Why do you think he is struggling with black voters right now, in particular black men? Well, as I indicated earlier, Peter, President Biden does have a track record of success with respect to increasing home ownership opportunities, lowering the unemployment rate within the black community to its lowest level in recorded history, record investment with respect to historically black colleges and universities, increasing entrepreneurial opportunities. But of course, there is more that needs to be done. And that will be part of the vision that is articulated for a second term that we recognize we want to continue to promote entrepreneurship with black men and throughout America amongst people of every race so promote home ownership and promote the creation of wealth so that everyone has a fair shot at the American dream. So you acknowledge he has some work to do with the black community. Before I let you go, I want to ask a question that I asked uh, your Republican colleagues as well, which is, will you vote to certify the results of the 2024 election no matter who wins? Certainly, that has always been uh, the case because in America, the peaceful transfer of power is sacrosanct. That's one of the reasons why many Americans, Democrats, independents, and traditional Republicans have been troubled by the election denialism or the denial that we've seen uh, coming from the other side of the aisle. I'm hopeful that this will be a campaign focused on the issues. And Democrats are going to continue to articulate our vision for solving problems for hardworking American taxpayers to create a bright future Le for everyone. Leader Hakeem Jeffries of New York. Mr. Leader, we appreciate your time. Thank you for joining us.